And here we go, game number four between Targa and Harstam. Harstam starting to the top right. And he won one map in the best of five so far, but Targa is a little bit ahead of him, starting to the top left with two wins under his belt. He is one map win away from advancing to the next round of the tournament. And let's see how that's actually going to work out for Targa. I have to say, like, this tournament is the Esports Venture Cup, and Esports Venture is a betting website. You can go to esportsventure.com and check that out. And I actually um, bet on those matches today, and I said that Targa was able to, would be able to win against Harston because I was very much impressed by Targa's performance yesterday. So my money literally is on Targa, and currently he's in the lead. So uh, let's see if he's able to take down Harstim. And, uh, well, for now we just have scouting going on, uh, the usual stuff. This is the map where we have gold bases. You can see one bare gold base over here, and the other one right here. And that usually comes into play. Makes the map a little bit unique, because as far as I know, in the current map pool, it is the only base that features gold bases, gold mineral patches. I might be mistaken there, but I'm actually pretty sure that I'm right. So, uh, let's see what exactly uh, in game number... Two is oh, sorry in game number four that's going to happen here. We have a 14 pool this time for Targa. He doesn't want to go into a hatch first, and he doesn't start with a nine pool this time. It's more of a normal timing on a two-player map. Not something that we are very surprised to see. We have also one probe already, just trying to sneak up and have a bit look at what exactly is happening there. Wants to know if there's gas already taken, if there's a hatch first, maybe even uh, annoy the drone that is eventually going to come down and take that. And there's the drone already, and I think he saw that, but he misses it a little bit. So what uh, is going to be the result of this? Targa is going to get his hatch without any problems whatsoever. Harstim just didn't realize that there was a drone already sneaking down, or he didn't care, and that hatch is going to be taken. Oh, he takes the gold expansion instead, so he sneaks in, and it looks like Harstim just doesn't even scout, so he doesn't care, doesn't see, doesn't know, and that's a pretty good opening here for Targa. Let's see how he can defend that uh, natural, because having that gold expansion this early in the game is pretty sweet. And, well, Nexus, on the other hand, here already dropped after the gateway for Harstam. And we have, in the middle of the map, a little bit of a workup battle. The drone is losing that pretty hard. Probes are quite beefy, so let's see what exactly is going on in the fourth game. Can Targa hold on to this uh, gold base? Or do we, at the top left, see him uh, just, yeah. Yeah, you could actually just slide those drones over. And that's probably what he's going to do. And there we go. So his income is going to spike just a little bit. And every second that Harstim doesn't know what's going on is... Yeah, is definitely working against him. He's a little bit on a clock here because Targa is going to start to get very much ahead in this series if Harstim is not able to somehow either take his own gold base and get an edge here or on the other hand maybe take down this one over there. Well those drones, yeah okay he moves them back. He realizes it, uh, catches that and moves the drones back. And in just a second I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you that income tab right now. And well look at how this is going to start to work out. We have currently for Harstim, let's also put the uh, Harvester tab up, with more Harvesters. He's looking at roughly 600 per minute against 800 per minute. So that's currently the difference that we see in the income, and that's just going to snowball as soon as more mi uh, gold, pa uh, as soon as more drones are harvesting from those gold patches right over here. We have also speed started, but that early advantage that he has there, that is really working quite well for him. And as I already mentioned, as soon as we have a better saturation in the main base and also over here at the natural, that is really going to come into play. Good saturation would be 12 harvesters, 2 harvesters per patch, that's exactly what he has right now. Can then also take the gas, but that is a very unfortunate situation for Hostum now, as long as he doesn't know what's, uh, what's going on. Because this extra income in minerals allows Targa to get extra queens out there, it allows him to go into gas a little bit faster, and we already have the gas taken here. That third base is of course also going to be taken quite soon, since minerals is something that he will have in abundance. And that should actually be uh, the advantage that he needs. The mothership core is making its way over and probably uh, having a quick poke. It might find out that there is a base. I don't think he saw just yet, but now that he sees the creep right over here, he realizes, well, that didn't go well for me so far. And suddenly we have a s an amazing amount of links being built. And you know what? With a bailing build, uh, with a bailing nest also, it looks like he's just going to try and bust through here. And he certainly has the numbers to support this. The only thing that I'm 
asking myself right now is, does he have the lava to support it? Because I doubt it a little bit. He's very low in lava right now, but he kept his uh, drone production at 29, which is actually still absolutely enough if you just have two bases and one of them is a gold expansion. So he's just trying to make sure that he has a massive amount of bane links and also, of course, those zerglings. The question is now, how many sentries do we have? And the answer is one. And, well, math is a sweet thing. The one thing is, like, shit ton of zerglings, shit ton of banelings, plus one sentry is a massacre and a dead protoss player. And, well, there we go. Force field number one is being dropped. And here come those banelings. And it's a party, guys. They can bust through those few warp gates, and that's exactly what they do. The lings are in, at least a few of them. Additional warp in sentries are not going to do enough. Here are the lings already in the main base at the natural. They're still trying to go strong. That one zealot here is going to be busted down as well. Harstim is supply blocked since he lost the pylon here in the main base. He's currently losing a couple of his probes. There are even bane lings being morphed underneath his nose. And Harstim is trying with the phoenixes whatever he can do. But yeah, there's another blow up. And how many did he kill? Six in total. Not really worth it for him. Targa is actually starting to throw this game a little bit. That was a very optimistic attack in the main base, and uh, he should have just attacked normally. A very nice bailing detonation that we unfortunately missed, but it's not too bad because it actually didn't kill anything. It just took all of those probes down to uh, uh, five hit points, but it didn't kill them, and now suddenly Hostem is ahead with 20 supply. And Targa is looking at it and is like, well, that didn't work out. And with those sentries now being there, oh my god, he traps those lings as well, and he will get all of them. Targa is desperately trying to throw this game away, I feel. That early advantage that he had with the mineral patches there is completely gone. Resources lost 600 versus uh, 2,800. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to say about that, but that was not really what he was trying to do there. So a little bit of a fail there by Targa. That could have been a much better for him. He's probably not too happy how this turned out. Trying to fall back into a more economy-based game now with a third base and attack in the lair. But he's very much far behind after this. And that is something that Harstim, of course, also realizes. So the Protoss player is taking his third base, basically uncontested. They're just a couple of links that have a quick peek, but they will never be able to really take that Nexus down. And for now, the Void Rays are going to be built. Harstim is trying to attack his opponent. That Queen has no business over there at the top of the map. Is, of course, being lifted and taken out as well. Dies a painful death. Dies screaming. And uh, Targa... What are you going to do? I mean, seriously, buddy, what are you going to do now? We have Spore Crawlers trying to protect the bases, especially, of course, the gold base is one of the things that he wants to protect as much as he can. And we see also more and more gas soon to be taken. I mean, he already has, like, one extracted at the uh, yeah, well, at gold base, at the third, one in the main base. He can take the double extractors over here, but he really needs to drone up hard. And he's currently looking at 50 harvesters. And from an economy standpoint, it's actually not too bad what he has here. The problem for him is really just that he lost so many units early on and so many minerals because of it that he has a very tough time to come back into the series. Since Harstim cannot do whatever he wants, the Protoss player can get whatever attack he wants, he can really uh, start to apply some pressure, he can get his third base. It's a pretty good mode, it's a pretty good time to be, uh, to be Harstim now. But we still have that gold base taken by Targa and that's something that should never be underestimated. Resources lost 3,500 versus 800 currently in this series. And, uh, well, Targa is at least trying to come back into this. And he has a really good income. That's something that we should once again highlight since there are gold mineral patches at his third base. So he's trying to just take up. He's trying to equalize the score numbers. Attacking is, in my opinion, a really stupid idea because the Protoss pledges has way too much. And Targa realizes that too is trying to run away. But the Phoenixes are pretty fast and they are just going to go in there. They go for a bit of a workout and lift one roach after another. And the rest of the army is just closing the distance and slowly but steadily killing them. So Targa is now transitioning into additional queens as the anti-air option. And also later on, of course, he can use the transfuses in the major battle. We have him with an infestation pit that helps him to go straight into a hive. And also the creep spread once again started. And... I really have to say that him covering the map in creep is pretty cool. I mean, he has very good mechanics in this. And it's just going to help him a lot later on. He 
question is just if in this game it's gonna play a role because he is still so far behind in the game. To give you a little bit of an idea how far behind he is, let's have a quick look at the harvest account here. 71 versus 59. Protoss versus Zerg, by the way. 48 army supply, 52 against 74. So he is in numbers just so far behind that it seems to be impossible for him to catch up. It's a lot of queens, by the way. With all those queens that benefit also from the plus one attack upgrade for range, he can do quite a lot of damage later on. We have six queens already, and he's going into three additional ones. So nine queens can do a lot against Void Rays, against Phoenixes, and it's actually a really good unit against Void Rays because uh, the uh, overcharge ability of the Void Rays does not affect queens. They are really good anti-air. They have a long range, and of course he needs to defend somehow. Here we have the Infestors now building. And with good chain fungals and the creed support and the rest of his army, if he can take down uh, that death ball that we see for Hearthstone, he might be able to come back into this game. But it's definitely not going to be an easy feat that he tries to accomplish here, especially since Archons are now already leading the charge and they will just melt Zerglings away. It's all about the Roaches now. We do not have Immortals, just now the first uh, robotics facility is being taken by Hearthstone. But I think the Protoss player is going to be very confident in his ability to take those fights. He's even sending just a massive amount of uh, Zala over to that base at the left side of the map that Targo was trying to take his fourth and now we have the major battle occurring here a little bit of a fail fungal whereas uh, Harstim is trying to take his gold base the zealots already in the natural and at the fourth base and that forces Targa back he is trying to move back but the major battle here with a nice fungals this time being used and those queens are doing a massive amount of damage and they force Harstim back Harstim is like yeah fuck that shit and immediately goes for the recall that is basically the panic button that he was pressing right now. The big problem for Targa is that during the entire time, those zealots were going ham on his harvest account, and Harstim killed 30 drones in that process. If you look at the overall supply, Harstim is looking at an opponent that has a really good army supply, with currently 116 to 87, but the worker supply for Targa is down to 53. I have to admit, though, that Targa has actually a lot more drones left than I was originally anticipating after I saw the zealots moving into the mineral lines. So Targa with the last fight kind of fought himself back into the game a little bit. He killed a massive amount of resource of his opponent, 4,000 in total. He has to deal with this base on the other hand somehow. Granting that Protoss player the gold base is something that he should try to avoid and he's already about to move in. Those queens on creep are a little bit faster and he's moving up. He sees those attempted cannons already and he can fight this army. Only a few roaches over there and I feel that he has to God, just go in and do a little bit more damage. The problem is that with all the zealots that the Harstim sent into the mineral lines, Targa has to retreat. He has to retreat and somehow deal with this. He cannot afford to lose even more harvesters. He's already so far behind, so he has to be careful how he does that. And the big problem is he needs transfuses, and those queens were not close enough. Uh, and one base gone. The Protoss player with the gold base. We suddenly have two cannons there not going to be enough to really withstand this army but well we're gonna find out at the bottom the roach is still trying to deal with those few zealots and there's also a spine crawler right now that's being attacked but Harstim is now forced with a small army or a couple of roaches as Targa split off of his main force and now he had the gold base even more harvesters go down oh my god Targa is actually taking a supply lead here for a little bit but the Protoss player has a massive, massive band that he can utilize any moment and then get the lead in overall supply. Targa is fighting his way back and I have to admit that if, I think if he would not have started this very aggressive bailing bust attempt, then he would probably now be in such a comfortable lead that it would be very difficult for Harstim to win this game. But the Protoss player is still ahead even though the supply is currently in favor of his opponent. We have Roaches moving in once again taking down those cannons and he wants that fight but the force fields are decent where are the fungals there's the first one does he get a second one in here comes a storm not accomplishing anything for the protoss player the roaches are closing the distance the storms are okay-ish but not really great especially with all those transfuse energy on the queen and now the army moves in again the storms are getting a little bit better but fungal after fungal hits this army and that works away at the shields 
The Queens are doing a decent job as well. The Transfusers are going strong. Volleyballs are being dropped all over the place. Immediately the Storms to counter those infested Swarm Eggs. And both of them are dropping in supply. But all of those Archons that are currently being morphed means that we have less high Templars for Storms. The problem is that Targa is starting to be really reduced in his army supply. We have a lot of Immortals that were doing just exactly what they were supposed to do, taking down the Roaches. And talking about Roaches, those guys took down most of the Harvesters at that gold base. The big problem for Targa just is that he doesn't have the bank. Harstim has a bank, and the army supply is now once again in favor of the Protoss player, if only by a small margin, but that's just only going to continue. The worker supply with 40 against 73 working in favor of Harstim as well, but this army is slowly and steadily going to die. The Queens are low on energy, the entire army is low on hit points, and Harstim is starting to make his own way over to the top left of the base of the map. He wants to kill all of these units. He wants to finish this. He wants to tie the series with a 2-2 and bring it to a final map in this best of five. An 80 supply lead is yeah, basically agreeing with him here. Yeah, that's what's going to happen unless Harstim drops now and even then he, we will just have a resume by replay and that would then finally finish Targa off. So the Zerg player is fighting a little bit longer but the GG is inevitable and Harstim is equalizing the score in the series and forces out a game five.